there are a couple different ways to turn an assembly into a part one of which is simply saving the assembly out as a part and if I open up that part now you'll see that it's created two surfaces based on the bodies that were in the assembly and it's also ignored anything that was inside of these two bodies as they're both enclosed and coincident so this is one way to do it and you'll lose your feature history and the other way is the insert part command So this bottle has been created using the same part and three different configurations. In order to use the insert part command, you have to have a different part saved out for each item. In this case, I have three configurations in this part, and I've saved out each one as an individual file. If I look at another file here, Armani Black Code Nozzle, you can see that I still have those configurations, but as long as this is saved in this configuration, this is what's going to come in when I use insert part. So I'll come back into the bottle and go into insert and part. And I'll choose that nozzle. and this is going to ask for what you want to transfer over generally you'll just select the solid body but you can choose other items as well if we wanted to transfer over planes for example we can do that as well and then you want to choose this locate part option if you're mating this component in or if I just click OK here because I built this all as a single part it goes to its default XYZ position which is at the top of that bottle in this case I'll go ahead and just click it in into the workspace and then now I'm brought into this mate dialog and the reason I chose to add the planes in is in this case this isn't necessary but if you have two complex surfaces for example you may not be able to mate those two together very easily so you'll want reference surfaces or reference planes to mate two so you get the correct alignment in this case I'm simply going to choose the mating surfaces add in a concentric and then choose the bottom of the nozzle and this face and add in that coincident relation and click OK. Now you can see what's brought in is that solid bodies folder, the planes, and this move copy body command for the mates that we just created. And now I'll go ahead and add in the cap, once again with that insert part command. And once again, if I just float over in this area, it'll go to its default XYZ position. Or once again, I can use that locate part option. In this case, if I just click OK, I no longer need to mate this. So unlike the mate command in the assembly mode, 
once these parts are added in, you won't be able to shift them at all. You can go back in and edit the feature. And if you check that again, this will bring you back into the mate settings. And you can also see, just like an assembly, you have this in context reference. And so once you update these parts, they'll update in this part as well. So while you're not able to look at the feature history within the part that you used insert part for, you will be able to go back into these parts and edit them. And we can also come in and, just like in an assembly, break all of our references. And so now this cap won't update with the model. But those are the two ways to create a part from your assembly files. Generally the insert part command is going to be a lot more robust. It'll allow you to update the parts, whereas if you're already finished with your assembly and you simply want to save it as a part, you can do that as well. And that'll simplify the history of the part quite a bit. But the trade-off, of course, is that you won't be able to edit that part or edit those parts.